Welcome into the Chiefs Report. Thanks to everybody for submitting their questions and using hashtag Chiefs for today's mailbag video. If you want to get on our next Q&A, go ahead and ask your questions down in the comments section. Aiden Whiting asks, what if the Chiefs traded Armani Watts in a fourth round pick for Malik Hooker? We've had a couple of Malik Hooker questions in the past. There have been some trade rumors surrounding him throughout this offseason because the Colts didn't pick up his fifth-year option. He's dealt with some injuries in Indianapolis. It's possible that he does not stay in Indy long-term. He's a good young player when he's healthy. He's just missed some time. The last couple of years, he's been mostly on the field. Obviously, his rookie year only played in seven games, but he's never played more than 14 games in a season. So I don't know if he's majorly injury-prone, but he certainly has some injury concerns. But... A fourth-round pick in Armani Watts for Malik Hooker? Sign me up for that. I think the Chiefs definitely win this trade. If you agree with me, type KC. If you think the Colts win this trade, type Indy. Uh, I don't think the Colts personally would take this trade. I know they declined Hooker's option, but uh, I think they would at least want a day-two pick, either a second or a third-round pick in return for Malik Hooker. Now, guys, I got a couple of questions recently saying, why aren't you posting more videos? Well, the bottom line is, is we have channels at Chat Sports that have more subscribers than the Chiefs Report do. We're growing, we're, you know, getting more and more subscribers, but Cowboys Report has like 62,000. We're just over 5,000. So it's simple. More subscribers equals more videos. There's a reason Tom gets to do multiple videos per day sometimes, and we're at like three or four videos per week. More subs, we'll get to daily videos eventually. You gotta subscribe, help us get the channel up on an upward momentum and keep subscribing and share the link youtube.com slash chiefs tv with a friend all right next question here monster jam 0311 loyal watcher so there is no news about contract talk with chris jones the question is will chris jones stay in kc that is the question isn't it monster jam um that's what we all want to know i think he's here for at least this year i think if they were going to trade him, it would have happened during the draft or shortly after. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's at least locked and loaded for 2020. Obviously, they have until July 15th to come to an agreement on a long-term extension. We know what the situation is, guys. The Chiefs like Jones. Jones wants to be in Kansas City, but he wants to get a huge contract without taking a pay cut. And the Chiefs don't want to overpay because they got to pay a guy like Patrick Mahomes. They already have a lot of big contracts on their books can't pay everybody top dollar. I think they'll figure something out eventually, but it seems a little less likely now than it did, say, a month ago. I'll say it's about 50-50 whether or not they get a long-term deal done with Jones before July 15th. They apparently haven't had contract discussions in months, so that's not the most positive sign, but maybe it could just be they want to get Mahomes done first and then circle back to Jones before that July deadline. I'm a big fan of Chris Jones. He's one of the best players on this Chiefs defense. We'll see if he can be a major impact player moving forward for Kansas City. At least he's here for 2020, barring something surprising. So that's the good news. What type of deal will Chris Jones play under in 2020? Will he get a long-term extension or will he play under the tag? Type L for long-term, type T for tag. You might get hit with the ad break. So if you do, scroll on down to the pinned comment and answer this question. All right, Taylor Gantz next up here on the Chiefs mailbag. Could you see us using Thornhill at cornerback at all of this upcoming season? We have the Honey Badger and Dirty Dan for safety, and Thornhill has cornerback experience. That's true. He played some corner at Virginia in college. It's possible they use him some there, especially if they trade for a guy like Malik Hooker, for example. I don't think he will be primarily be used as a corner. Perhaps they use him in the nickel some when they use five defensive backs to help you know, fill that void left by Kendall Fuller. I think he could do some of that, but I don't think he'll play a lot of outside corner, especially coming off an ACL injury. You don't want to move him from safety to corner where he would have to play a lot more man-to-man -man coverage. And, hey, he was great last year as a safety. I think he's a 10, 15-year pro at that position where he was excellent last year. Hopefully uh, he continues to recover quickly. He can be ready to go by week one. I think he's primarily going to continue to be uh, that safety next to Tyron Matthew, but maybe you see him lined up at corner, especially in some nickel packages. All right, guys, I want to tell you about the deal of the day here on the Chiefs Report. You can get this Stronger Together gear at chatsports.com slash KC Strong. All of this gear supports the COVID-19 relief fund. It goes to a good cost. 
Uh, you got t-shirts, you got hoodies, they look good. And if you use promo code uh, COAST, you can get these on sale for a limited time only. So go to chatsports.com slash KC Strong. I'll put that link in the comments and in the description. These shirts and hoodies at a very good price right now, and it supports a very good cause. Let's continue to rally together and uh, you know be positive with one another. Get yourself a new shirt or hoodie for the upcoming season. Next up is Chiefs fan 454. On the unlikely chance that Damian Williams is traded, who should the Chiefs trade for? Uh, I do agree it's unlikely, but I also agree that it is possible. I'll put it at 10 to 15 percent. It would not shock me because uh, the Chiefs uh, have a ton of running backs. I love Damian Williams. He seems to find another gear, especially in the playoffs, because you look at these numbers, you're like, eh, he's fine, rotation type back, seven touchdowns, pretty good, you know, over 700 total yards rushing and receiving in a pass heavy offense, not bad, right? But he just finds another gear in the playoffs, which is just so strange, but it's been the case the past couple of years. But the reason this could be an option is they drafted Clyde edwards helaire The Chiefs have a lot of running backs on the roster. They have five legitimate NFL backs. You're not carrying five. I don't see that being the case, especially when Anthony Sherman is going to get a roster spot at fullback. That's six if you include him. Uh, I think they'll carry four, but someone's got to go. Now, Damian Williams would probably bring you the most in a trade outside of Edwards Hilaire, who they're not going to trade, obviously, since they just drafted. Uh, so maybe they trade him, but we will see. Which running back is the odd man out? If the Chiefs are looking to get some value for one of them, you trade Damian Williams. If you simply cut somebody, I think it's Darrell Williams, and hopefully he gets to your practice squad, but in reality, a team probably picks him up because he is a quality back. I think it's Darrell Williams, but let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Silver Vlindez says or asks, which player do you think will make a developmental jump into becoming an impact player? Speaks, Fenton, or Saunders? So obviously Breland Speaks, Rashad Fenton, or Kalen Saunders. Fenton and Saunders being second-year players. Basically a second-year player in Breland Speaks because he spent all of last season on IR. I don't love his chances because I think the defensive line is uh, pretty crowded. I think, quite frankly, he's going to have to fight for a roster spot. Fenton and Saunders will make the roster, so I think one of them is more likely. I will go with Rashad Fenton because I like what I saw in limited snaps last year, 166 snaps. And based on what the Chiefs have done this offseason up to this point, I think they're comfortable with rolling with Fenton as their primary nickelback. I think he's going to start at nickel. He will fill that Kendall Fuller uh, uh, role there, maybe play some safety as well, and have great value on special teams. He played good in coverage last year in those 166 snaps. Uh, we'll see what he looks like in a full-time role, but I think he's got a legitimate chance of being a big contributor in, or contributor in 2020. All right, guys, reminded you earlier to subscribe, but hey, if you want a Chiefs breakout candidates video, guys like Rashad Fenton might be on there, go ahead and subscribe. We're always coming up with new video ideas. If we get enough subs on this video, that probably means that you guys want a breakout candidates video. If we get enough subs, I will do it just for you guys. Hit the link, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV, but you're watching. Go ahead and click that big red button. All right, Chiefs Forever asks, if Eric Berry had a possibility to come back, do you think he would? And if he did, what role would he play in Spag's defense? A couple things to break down here. Number one, very unlikely he comes back to the Chiefs or any other team because uh, there's a reason teams don't sign a perennial all-pro player. That means that they don't trust his medical. They don't think he's healthy. And I think that's pretty accurate. He's still young enough, 31, 32 years old, but he just couldn't stay healthy the past couple of years of his career. He battled injuries throughout his career. I love Eric Berry. He's always going to be a fan favorite in Kansas City. Uh, but I don't think it's going to happen. Now, I will say, if it did happen, as you look at the numbers here, uh, you see his last two years, 2017, 2018, only played in three games. Obviously, 2015, 2016, he was great. Um, I think he would be a third safety. I, I mean, you're not going to bench Juan Thornhill for him unless you're committed to moving him to corner. Um, he'd be great for the locker room. He would have value in those sort of cases. But in terms of on the field, I don't know how much value he'd have because I have no idea if he's healthy. I can only assume he's not because no team has signed him. Should the Chiefs sign Eric Berry? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Again, work him out? Absolutely. I got no problem with that. It, I, work out any player. Work out Des Bryant. Work out whoever. Like, you should always be willing to do those things. But flat out sign, I'd have to see some evidence that he is healthy. 
All right, Adam Daughtery here before we wrap things up. Will Travis Kelsey be able to maintain his over 1,000 yards a season streak? Obviously, four straight years of 1,000-plus yards for Travis Kelsey, the best tight end in the NFL. I don't care what anybody says. Um, I think so. I mean, you look at his past two years, he's, you know, he's well over 1,200 in each of them, so it would take a fairly drastic drop-off to not reach 1,000. But on the same, you know, uh, token there, lots of mouths to feed, right? Kelsey, Tyree Kill, Sammy Watkins, McCole Hardman, Demarcus Robinson, Clyde edwards helaire Damian Williams. I mean, the list goes on and on for the Kansas City Chiefs. DeAndre Washington, I think, will have a role in this offense. I think it's, po I think it's pretty likely he'll at least hit 1,000. But it could drop from 12, 1,300 to 1,000-ish, 1, 1,100 yards as guys like McCole Hardman continue to get more involved. So I'm going to say yes, he'll get a fifth straight 1,000-yard season, Adam. But don't look for 1,300 or 1,400 yards because I, Patrick Mahomes, is going to spread the wealth all around.